All right, we are going to be starting chapter five in this video. Um, so chapter five is kind of a fun little chapter. It's right before we start doing some trig, uh, and we're going to get into some types of functions that you probably haven't seen too much, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, so the first section is going to be about composite functions. Now these are taught like in an algebra two class uh, or in math 120. Um, so you've definitely seen these before. So let's go ahead and define them and then we'll start to work with them. We're not gonna um, deal with them too much uh, in this class, but we still gotta go through them. All right, so a composite function, uh, it is an operation. It's not an arithmetic operation, uh, but it is an operation that takes two functions, uh, f and g, and produces a function h such that uh, h of x is equal to f of g of x. So we've taken two functions and you've plugged one of them into the other to create uh, a brand new function. So that's what a composite function actually is. <clears throat> uh, so we're gonna be interested in, uh, a lot in actually calculating uh, values of a composite function. Uh, and there are a couple of ways to do this. Uh, so let's start or start with example one. Uh, f of x equals x squared plus two. G is root x plus four. And we're gonna evaluate each of the following. So one of the ways you could do this is just follow the definition straight out. So you would take this function, you plug it in for all the x's and f to give you a new function. And then you could finally plug in the value. Uh, and that's totally fine. Uh, for this example in particular, it wouldn't be too difficult to do, but sometimes it's pretty pretty lengthy. Uh, so instead, we're just going to start plugging in numbers. So you're going to work your way from the inside out. So you're going to take the 5, and you're going to plug it into G. So you're working your way inside out, or you're working from uh, right to left. So the first thing is G of 5. So g of five, that's gonna give you the square root of nine or just three. Well, once you have that completed, like you have a result, you're gonna take the result and you're gonna plug it into the next function going to the left, which in this case is f. So f of three, and then stick that into your function. And so you get a total of 11. And if there were other functions out here, like you would just repeat that process all the way down. Uh, so personally, I like this way a lot better. Uh, it just seems faster to me. Um, but if you want to actually create, you know, f of g of x as a function, you know, you can totally do it. <clears throat> okay, let's try it again. So g of negative 1, stick that into the g function and you're going to end up with the square root of 3. Take that result of root 3, plug it into the f function, and we're going to end up with 5. And you're done. And that last number that you get, that is your final answer. Okay, so that's how you can do it with actual functions. So let's see how we can do this if we're working off of a graph. <clears throat> Uh, so part A, G or sorry, F of G of three. So it's basically the same type of thing. Figure out what G of three is. So looking at the G graph, when X is three, the Y coordinate is five. So G of three is five. And just like you did before, you know, work your way from right to left. So take the five and stick it into the function of f. So when x is five, the y value is negative two. Important thing for these is just to make sure you've got the, the right, or you're using the right function at the right time. Uh, so like on example b, uh, the first thing we have to do is f of one. So we're on this graph over here uh, to start. So f of one, So when x is 1, y is 2, 
and then you can move over to the G graph. So when X is two, the Y value is zero, and there's your answer. Okay, uh, so part C, it has a different notation. It has that little circle, so um, that still means a composite function. That's F of G of negative one. So start it the same way. So G of negative one. So X is negative one, the Y is negative three. Then move over to the F graph. When X is negative three, the Y value is six. <clears throat> All right, so example D, you work your way from left to right. So the two goes into the G. which was zero. We're gonna take the zero and plug it into the next function to the left, which is f. So f of zero is three. And then sticking it to the next function on the left, which is g. So g of three is equal to five. Okay, so that's how you can use a graph. So the next example three, we're not gonna calculate a value, we're actually gonna figure out what the composite function is as a function itself. Um, <clears throat> so instead of plugging in a value, now we're gonna plug in the whole entire function. So f of g, we gotta take the g function and stick it into every single x that's an f. So this x is gonna come out, it's gonna come out of the game, it gets substituted. So plug in your sub, which was the ln. This x comes out, and his sub is the ln. And the negative four just stays right where it is. And that's pretty much all you can do with it. It has nothing really to combine. It didn't tell you to factor to solve it, so you just leave it alone. And then part B, now it's flip-flopped. Now you're taking the F function and you stick it into the X's and G. So that is gonna be LN of three. And then this X is coming out and his substitute is X squared plus three X minus four. Uh, minus two and this one you can simplify because if you distributed the three There would be two terms you could combine so 3x squared uh, plus 9x and then a total of negative 14 once you combine the terms <clears throat> Okay, so that's how you can create the actual function uh, Example four we're gonna go backwards. So we want to find functions f and g so that f of g is actually equal to h. So we're giving you h, you have to find two functions that you can stick together to create this. And there are a lot of different answers. There's not just one. You just have to find one solution set. That's all you have to do. So as long as it works, you can pick whatever you want. So you can make it as complicated uh, or as simple as you need to be. So it said f of g, so g is gonna be like the inner function. So that's pretty much how I go for this, is I take like whatever's on the inside, so inside the parentheses, inside the angle, inside the radical, inside the absolute value, whatever's inside, that's the g. So in this case, it'd be one plus x squared. And then the f is gonna be everything that's left. So that, you, like you took out the one plus x squared, so that's gone, so you just have the cube like the third power. Well, you can just have an exponent. So anywhere there's like a blank, or like an open spot, you're just sticking an X. So then for part B, I'm gonna let the G function be whatever's inside. So in this case, the angle. So that would mean the F is the sine and again, I can't just leave it just a sign. It has to be sine of something, so sine of x. 
So those are pretty simple. There are other ones you could do. Um, I mean, there's probably an infinite amount of answers you could give. Uh, just as long as it works. So if you stuck this function into f and get this as an answer, you're good to go. All right, so that is gonna do it for section 5.1. So try the homework out and let me know what your questions are.